Okay, the video that you're about to watch is the last half. The first half, for some reason, got corrupted and was unable to be salvaged. So this is just an intro to it. This is the Mr. Christmas Merry-Go-Round Carousel, which has been repaired before, but this one had slightly different issues. So I'll link below to the first video so you can watch how to disassemble it. And then in a moment, it's going to start where the SD card didn't get corrupted and it'll be the repair. The actual, once the parts arrived, was able to reassemble and repair. And then you'll see how even after it was repaired, it didn't want to work right. And it took me a few more attempts to get it to actually function. So uh, enjoy the last half of the video. And again, link below will be the first half, which will have how to take it apart. Since the first half, or excuse me, the first video uh, was done a year or so ago, where I had two of them and made one functional one out of two. So the process is exactly the same in disassembly and diagnosis. So you can get to that and then skip back to this one or watch that video in its entirety and then come back to this video and go from there. But this one had a different problem than the previous. So that's why I was trying to film it. And unfortunately, the SD card uh, got damaged. So new card. And luckily the last half or the repair was on the new card. So, all right, enjoy. All right, it's been a few weeks to get the gears. Um, they got lost in the mail. I hate when that happens, but I replaced these gears, reassembled it with some lube, which you can also get the lube from Mr. Christmas or Happy Holiday Parts. Um, and I'll link it. I'll link the website below. All you got to do is search for your specific carousel. And if you type in lubrication, it'll come up with these little tubes, which can be used on other things than Mr. Christmas. So I'm going to throw away these broken gears. I don't need them hanging around and getting added to a pile by accident. <laughs> so uh, I pressed the gears on. If you've seen other videos, um, I show how to do it. But you just line it up and squeeze it straight and then push it to where it's in alignment. Um, I put this on the teeth of the gears and where the shafts go through the brass bushings. And then you can see it now turns. It's amazing what a stack of new gears will do. So I'm going to turn it back off. And now we're going to drop uh, the top back on. Oh, I also added some of this to the shaft. It's kind of oozing up right here. So that this spinning key part, because you can see the side's flat, is uh, well lubricated. And um, that's all that needs to be lubricated, because this shaft actually engages in here, which has the key hopefully you can see it so no no wires wires have got to be up No, they fell down again. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can push them inside, you can pull them out of the bottom. A uh, small rubber band will actually work too. Which I have one of those. Wrong bag. Kind of rubber band. It's a small belt, but I got a whole bunch of small belts, so I ain't too concerned about damaging this. So, bread tie would work. fingers are still greasy from the lubrication. Makes it really hard to grab the belt. <sighs> I 
make sure the power is off when you do this because you do not want those two wires shorting out. You can even unplug it if you're really concerned. Now we just spin it till the key lines up and then it'll just drop right on. Like that. Pretty nifty, huh? Take the belt back off. My belt's probably still good, but I'm probably not going to use it because I did stretch it to wrap it around. So, and making sure it's fully seated and that it's engaging the pulley. And what we can do is so it's engaging the pulley. The horses on the outside don't go up and down because. The rotor is not attached. So, you need to put the rotor back on. trying to feed the wire up. Wires have itty bitty notches for them but the problem is it's just getting them to come out. That one doesn't have the axis in the bottom like the rest of them do. <laughs> Shove the wires up inside just to make sure I don't bump the power switch. I'm going to uh, unplug it. Something with a little bit more grip than the uh, needle nose, or excuse me, the tweezers. The needle nose has teeth, so I can grab the wire and actually force it up the hole, so that way I can get it all the way in. Some of these have a much bigger tolerance to where you can slide it over. This rotor assembly doesn't. so. in far enough.
got the red one in and then the black one came out. Now, this is the part I've never liked is trying to get these to uh, slide back over. When you pull it off, it uh, follows the direction up. When you push it on, it pushes it onto the fatter part of the shaft because the shaft is stepped and that's what gets it caught. wires all the way in. You could do this with your fingers if you have dexterity. I guess technically you put the nut on first before you pull the wires out, but the nut usually will slide over the wires if you point them straight up. Because the nut's on one of the narrower steps, whereas the rotor uh, it doesn't have a lot of tolerance. Make sure your soldering iron is ready to go. Mine's on. Get the wires in the flats and you can feed them up under the threads of the nut. Of course they will grab a little bit. But there we go.
think I have some better players around here somewhere. Once you get the nut on, make sure that you get it down snug, but not so tight that it can't rotate. There we go. I think we're good. And if you remember, I marked the red and the black. That way I didn't put the rotor on backwards. Just retinning these since it has been a couple of weeks. <sighs> yeah. Apparently, the shipping place says they shipped it and then they didn't ship it, and so I didn't get my gear pack for this and one other piece. And instead of taking it three days, it took uh, almost 14. I hate when that happens. It delays everything. It makes life miserable. Just gonna snug up the nut. Make sure my solder joints are good. Good contact. <clears throat> Closer inspection. contact with the rotor. Alright, so we're not getting a good connection on the rotor. So let's clean it off. This is 99% isopropyl alcohol. Anything 91 and above works pretty good uh, for cleaning corrosion and stickiness. Uh, anything below the 91, you get a lot of water in it since that's what dilutes the alcohol. And it takes longer for one to evaporate and two to clean. So, let's see if that helps with the contact. And then I have some dielectric grease we'll put on there. Let's get rid of the towel. Make sure there's no fuzz from the paper towel. Here we go. Horses and lights and it's not so jerky anymore. up a little bit more and put the top on it and make sure everything's good.
Couldn't remember if the top spun with it or not. That's why I want to put the top on to see if the top added extra weight or problems. I'm going to brush a thin coat on. The dielectric grease allows for cotton uh, better connection on the uh, tracks and reduces the chance of corrosion, especially now that it's raw brass since I cleaned off the stuff that was growing on it. Normally I would just ooze this stuff on and do it, but I found by doing it that way it's not as good. Brushing the stuff on uh, gives a very thin, even coat, and you don't have to uh, clean up a big mess. And if you put too much on here, just use some paper towel or your finger and wipe off the excess. You just want a very thin coat to protect the track and provide a little bit more uh, continuity. So I'm just going to wipe off the center where I got some globs. Put a little too much in here. Too much in here. I'm not wiping off a lot. I'm just taking off the high spots and yeah, cleaning the connections here. It's all trial and error. The track's not flat, but I shouldn't be doing this. That's why they have these springs. Uh, the negative is the one that's having the issues. It's I can see it sparking. That's why I cover it with my hand. There's something wrong with this. It's not engaging. These are on springs, so they can follow the motion of the track, but for some reason, this one's getting stuck.
what's happening is this is getting stuck up. take it back off and clean out uh, where the spring is because the positive isn't sparking just the negative when it goes up and down there's an itty bitty little spark because it's in enough of the shadow from the big light that they can see it There's a high spot in the track here that pushes it up, and that's where it gets stuck. Right there. Same spot every time, and then it should turn back on. All right. So I can try and push the track down so it stops sticking, and I can take this apart and try and clean out the hole where this slides through on the spring. So I'll probably end up doing that. So that way we can get this to work. The center positive track is relatively flat, but the outer negative track has a big hump right here and it pushes it in. And once it pushes it in, it takes a second for it to come back down and remake contact. So that's why it's doing what it's doing. So, now I see what the problem is. I'm going to um, take this back apart and see about uh, figuring out why this spring doesn't want to push this down all the way. If there's something in here, grit because it seems to have pretty good contact. And then I'll see if I can uh, try and push this down. I mean, it flexes. I'll see if I can make it so it doesn't flex back up. Maybe put a dab of uh, super glue underneath it so that way it holds it flush. To drop a very small drop of um, oil in here because you don't want that oil dripping through onto the track because then it could come off and touch one of these components, which could damage the component. So, so anyway, you know how to take it apart. Desolder, unscrew the nut, uh, pull it off. It's pretty simple. It's pretty basic for all of them. So you probably don't want to watch me do it again. But I'm going to work on this some more and try and figure out what's causing this to stick. Positive one staying flat. There's no contours in the inner track, so there are no problems. Just this guy right here, where it lifts right here, and the track flexes. The rest of the track doesn't flex, just right here, and that's where my problem is. So I am going to tinker with it some more, and when I come back, it should hopefully be fully functional. Does flicker a little at the one spot. Apparently, a lot more now because I have to take the top back off. Uh, let's turn the volume down. Also, deafening. But it does rotate. So it has that little flicker. I have cleaned the um, contacts. I've flattened out the track and. I'm not sure what uh, is causing it, but I'm going to still work on it. But it was working just fine until I turned on the camera. <laughs> uh, and I found if you put the top on, it actually helps. So I think the top puts a little pressure on the lip. But, take it back apart. Try again. Alright. Take 75. No, just kidding. Alright, the um, apparently when I reset the spring... The spring got wedged around the bottom fat part that touches the contacts, which means that the spring, when it would go up and down, was grabbing and holding the pin upwards. So, uh, basically, when you clean out that area, make sure that you make sure, well, make sure the spring is centered. Apparently, that was my problem. I put it together, and I didn't realize that uh, the spring 
had slid on the shaft. So now, I've adjusted the spring, and no, well, it's not as bad, but you can see it's working way better. So I think I'll adjust it one more time, and I think we'll be good. But that's what it is. So I'll link below for Happy Holidays parts, where you can find the parts you need for Mr. Christmas, and some to Lee Max and the Parma 56. And then I will also link to some gears, because I use both Mr. Christmas and gears from Amazon, When because uh, when the package got lost, I found that one of the gears I needed came from Amazon. So, But anyhow, there we go. I'm going to do one more tweak on it, let it run for about 20, 30 minutes, because that's what I do with all the pieces when I'm done with them, is I let them run for about a half an hour, make sure it doesn't screw up, and I can package this up and ship it back to its owner. Thanks for watching.